All right. So again, thank you so much for uh, spending your afternoon with us. Um, today, we're going to learn how you can reduce your marketing budget uh, with Pit Crew Rewards through their blast and email feature. Um, I just wanted to do some introductions. So my name is Cynthia Hadabaugh. I joined Pit Crew about six months ago. I have 15 years experience um, in the shop. So I know what you guys experience day in and day out. And we were Pit Crew users before I ever thought I would leave um, the wonderful shop I worked for. But uh, when I learned I had to relocate out of state, uh, I reached out to Pit Crew because they did such a great job for us. I wanted to be a part of the team. Um, and then we also have uh, Phil Jackson here. He's our uh, business development manager. Phil, I don't know if you want to unmute yourself and say hello. Hello, everybody. And and John, thanks for joining us. My my background is very similar to, to Cynthia's. Um, worked in a shop that, that used Pit Crew for a number of years, a, a chain store out here in Phoenix as well. Um, had major success with it. Um, Jeff and I uh, paths crossed later down the line. That's why I'm I'm working here. So uh, we're excited to to present this this webinar. Marketing is is something we obviously hang our hat on. So what you got to do if if we don't cover what you need in in this webinar, uh, just reach out to Cynthia and I, and we're we're happy to to cover any more questions. Perfect. And then um, we also have with us John Gustafson. Uh, so John Gustafson is a shop owner in uh, beautiful Huntington Beach. California. Um, the shop's called Gustafson Brothers. And him and his brother Frank started the shop. It will be 52 years, right, John, in February? Yes, it will. Coming 52, right up. 52 years. So for them, it started out as a uh, kind of a hobby. It was their job to fix their dad's car. He had a long commute. Uh, the neighbors started saying, hey, you guys are always fixing cars. What, can you fix mine? And they would do it for, for fun money. And now it's a multi-shop location and with the uh, auto body shop. So wow. they learned as they went. And mm -hmm. one thing I've always loved about John is that, um, like I said, he, he, he grew with the shop, right? He learned as he went. It's, it's a huge, pla huge place on a couple acres, but there were no investors. It wasn't a, a dealership. Um, everything there he built uh, on his own from scratch with hard work and, and dedication. So all right, um, a couple housekeeping items. So keep yourself muted. Um, we will invite questions, uh, but we know that the shops get loud. There's a lot of uh, money making going on there. The louder it is, the more money you make. Um, so we'll try to keep the, the background, background noise down if we can. Um, we will have a Q&A session at the end. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can put it in the chat or raise your hand. If, uh, yeah, everyone, perfect. Mute yourself. All right, good. Um, so we'll be, we'll be sharing uh, some information via chat. So if you can find the uh, chat feature on your um, screen right now, it's usually like that little text message bubble. So if you have we're in the middle of something and you want to ask a question, go ahead and chat in there, and we may throw some information in there um, throughout the program for you as well. So, all right. Any questions before we get started? Okay, <clears throat> so our agenda today is we're going to talk about building your database, right? Uh, we'll talk about building your brand, uh, keeping your customers engaged, staying engaged, designing a plan. Uh, we'll show you how to schedule a blast. And then, like I said, we'll do the, the Q&A session. Um, so I'm going to kind of interact with John here because he's our, our subject matter expert about building the database. Um, so John shared that he built uh, his ideal customer database and that it didn't happen overnight, obviously, right? He's been in business for 52 years. Um, so tell us, John, how did you go about building your, your ideal customer database? Can you guys hear John? Uh, John, you're muted, so. There should how about, be a... How about that? Ooh, perfect. Okay. Well, thanks for having me today. Marketing for us um, wasn't necessary for the first uh, 20 years. We didn't know any better. 
And we had a study done by a local MBA college set of students that wanted to graduate, so they had to find somebody. And they came out and taught us that um, if we wanted to grow, we had to have a marketing plan. And they analyzed everything, came back and said, you need to realize that marketing is an evolution and it has a life cycle. And we were looking for a way to reach people. We searched long and hard to find anybody that could do uh, what Pit Crew does, which is texting, uh, text blasts, and um, rewards program. Nobody had a manageable re rewards program. So that's how we got to know the company. And it's just been a great success ever since. And um, I can tell you more about it as we go. When you were building your ideal um, customer base, you had mentioned that you looked at vehicle type, right? So the type of cars they drive, right? You want to attract customers that drive the types of cars that you want to fix. Um, location, so proximity to the shop. Sure. Income and uh, home ownership, right? That was your... That your was the criteria, uh-huh. Exactly, perfect. Um, <clears throat> so tell us a little bit how you built uh, your customer base, uh, direct mail. How did that, how did that work? Well, direct mail was really expensive, but it was a necessary piece of the puzzle to get the mm -hmm. traffic to the door, but then capturing the customer's email address and getting permission to text was ongoing. Like every person that came in, it was really a focus. And with that in place, we're able to then keep in touch with them and then we we not well, I think we were probably a year and a half, two years with a lot of direct mail. And then we were able to taper it off and turn it off. And we no longer do direct mail. And then as far as reputation, how did you use your reputation in the direct mail or how did you use that to build your database? Well, by that point, we were probably 30 years into the business. Um, and if you treat the people correctly, the guest, as we call them, if we treat them with uh, dignity and honesty, they come back and they do some marketing for you. So we we use we give rewards to people for having referred somebody else in. We add to their rewards um, uh, balance. Fantastic. And then what about uh, the community involvement? How do you, how does Gustafson give back to the community? Mm -hmm. So marketing is really global. It's, it's huge and you have to have consistency. And one of the pieces that we found was that we had to be part of the community and we had a representative in the local chamber of commerce and the Kiwanis meetings at the YMCA, uh, you name it, we were there. And that made a big difference too. And we grew throughout the years to a pretty good sized team. I think we're up in the, in the high sixties for team members now with um, probably 12, I think we're shooting this year for $13 million in, um, in revenue. But we started out as a, a one bay shop. Great. Um, I just want to make sure, can you guys still see my screen? me a thumbs up if you can see it. I can see Good? it. Okay, perfect. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm getting reports some people can't see and then share again. Let's see if that uh, that works. Thumbs up. All right, cool. Everyone give me a thumbs up. They can see it. All right. <clears throat> so building your brand. And this is something that um, I know that you had mentioned, John, that you follow very closely. And um, so does everyone in your company know your mission? Oops, let me go back one slide. Excuse me. Ignore the lady. Give me one quick second behind the curtain. <clears throat> So 
So while you're getting that organized, um, <laughs> we 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 found um, through listening to webinars by coaches that there was a process called the Entrepreneurial Operating System EOS, and there are several books on the process, and it was eighty percent like what we already knew to do just by learning over time. But that coaching was was very valuable, and we began to read the books on EOS, and it trained us the last 20% of the stuff we didn't know and gave us the ability to hold consistent, meaningful meetings and communicate the vision, mission, core values, and a marketing plan to the team. Perfect. And that's called the EOS, right? Yeah, the Entrepreneurial Operating System is, um, the, the main book is Traction. Traction. And then you can you can buy that book or it's on uh, the book on tape, which is, you can di- yeah. download it from Amazon. Yeah. Um, okay, so back to the screen. Hopefully everyone can see it. Um, you had mentioned that marketing aligns when you focus on your mission, vision, and and values. Tell us, uh, I know you talked a little bit about that, but can you tell us a little bit more how those three intersect? Well, you, you start with core values. You define those and that's how your company's going to run. And of course, you involve the entire team in that process so that they all share your core values and you recruit, hire, uh, promote, discipline, and terminate based on core values. And then your mission is your um, vision traction organize your piece where you're going you know what are your one-year goals your three-year goals and your 10-year target and that sets your vision mission and values in place and you have to share it with everyone um, effectively weekly and it doesn't take that long and when everybody's rowing in the same direction you make a lot of traction perfect so I guess the question to ask yourself, does everyone in your company know your mission, vision, and values? And then, so John, how do you communicate and train the train these items? So the in the EOS process, there's a weekly leaders uh, 10 meeting, L10 meeting, that we we have a standardized agenda that we populate at the end of the last agenda based on the to-do items and the... Um, and the issues that come up, it's on time, same time every week, and it lasts the same amount of time. And every company is going to be different depending on how many participants there are on your leaders team. But we communicate weekly with our leadership team, and they disseminate the the story to the whole team. And then we hold quarterlies in an annual meeting, and we're getting results that we never thought possible. It, what what is Gustafson's mission? The well the the core values are honesty, integrity, and help first. So Tell me, go go ahead. The the objective is zero defects and zero stress. And we have financial goals and a daily tracker, and it. It, it's almost uh, in this era uh, automatic. Wonderful. And so uh, knowing the mission and the, the direction that the company wants to go, that kind of helps you align your marketing, right? Because if you're in growth mode, you're going to market one way. Whereas if you're in just, you know, maintaining your current da- database, you're going to market a different way. Yes. And we're in the rewards phase where we have a, uh, is a 17,000 member uh, customer base and we reach them regularly and the bays are full every day That's with, awesome. the right, yeah. with, the, with the right kind of work. Exactly. The right kind of work and the right kind of type of vehicles, the, the vehicles that your, um, your technicians can work on. Boy, I'm having a little trouble here. I'm sorry, guys. My uh, now my PowerPoint is snoozing on me. Um, but I know that the next thing we wanted to talk about is how you um, 
stay engaged with your customers. So tell us a little bit about that. So we have a monthly newsletter that goes out, but let me back up from there. We have a 12 month plan. One month is a, an alignment check that we do for free. Roll the car, drive it, roll it on the machine, measure it, it's free. If it doesn't need alignment, it's free. Uh, another month is um, uh, safety inspection for trip prep. Another month is um, uh, lighting inspection. As soon as the uh, November hits and we get longer dark nights, you know, longer darkness. Uh, every month is a special case and we promote that. And if somebody wants to wait till November every year to get a free light check, that's okay. But they'll know um, we're in our second year now of that program. So we just set it up. We looked ahead for a year and said, what is seasonally, what is seasonally appropriate that people would want to take advantage of? And those are the things that we um, promote in the newsletter blast, followed about a week later with a text blast. And if we're having a unseasonably wet uh, year and we're not very busy, we'll send out an immediate text blast to say, give you a free set of wiper blades with a regular service. And uh, surprisingly, uh, the, the, the driveway fills up. Perfect. So, it's, so it's just staying in touch. Exactly. Um, so I'll, we'll go over those uh, two types of marketing in a minute. But uh, to touch on what you were saying, um, with the blast, what it does, it basically provides an easy way to communicate with your with the customers. And um, in addition to the text blast, you're also using the text communication in the shop as well, correct? Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, and I, I also know for a fact that in addition to using text to communicate with his mechanical customers are also using it to communi communicate with your auto body customers as well. Yes. Uh, texting is the way of the world these days. Yeah. Um, and then with the loyalty rewards, you're showing appreciation and gratitude to be, we kind of talked about that. And with that, it builds trust. So, so tell us how in at Gustafson brothers, the loyalty rewards has built trust with your customers. So Auto repair is no longer an inexpensive item and people want to get something back. And when they, when they get something back and they've had a good experience, the, the trust cycle, you know, that when we do orientation for um, any new hire, we remind them that within five miles, there are a couple hundred shops and customers have a choice. So the way we treat customers, um, we had a budget of certain percentage of sales went back into marketing. And we found that if we gave them that money, instead of paying a marketing uh, company to produce a new uh, uh, flyer mailed, that if we sent out a blast and we gave them money back, that was money that was going to be received back to the, our to our community, and they they really trust us to do the right thing, and they love the fact that that they can use their rewards balance. Now we limit it. In our case, we say you can't redeem more than fifty bucks worth of rewards, and you can set your percentage of what you're going to give them for each visit at your level: one percent, two percent, three percent back cash back like you get on your credit cards. So it, it really drives customers. Absolutely. So that's something good to know that uh, Pit Crew, you were able to tailor it to what um, worked for your marketplace, right? So what percentage you wanted to give back. And yes. at, at your shop, you even put a limit on how many rewards they can redeem per visit. And you had mentioned that you put a cap of $50. And that's something that you just kind of police internally. We do. We have a chart that um, at the end of the day, the frontline team, <clears throat> they report uh, who redeemed and how much. And um, we can see who's using the, uh, the points, the credits. And we look back and 
consistently, it's a customer who's spent, been there six visits, they've spent, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars and they're redeeming fifty bucks. Yeah. Seems like that wouldn't be enough to drive them, but boy does it work. It does. Yep. Just like that Kohl's cash. What is what is your average RO? Uh, the average RO right now is running seven seven hundred and change. Good. Perfect. So a small discount to keep them engaged, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, and then this the the process. So designing a plan really comes next, right? Once you have your your database built, you've decided your what your marketing is going to be for a year. Then you want to determine how are you going to share the market? How are you going to share uh, the promotion or uh, special, if you will, with your customers? And this was a slide that you provided from one of your actual shop meetings, right? Of your process. So yes, you do the texting uh, monthly blast, right? You send a text out once a month. Um, and then you follow up with an email, social media posts, and then tell us about the on hold message. So for consistency, you know, we you have to, everybody gets put on hold at some point. We give them a reminder of what services we offer and what the monthly special is. And very surprisingly to me, when they get back on the line, they say, hey, I heard it while I was on hold about your... Uh, free alignment check. Would you do that while you got it? Or check oh. my lights. You already have my car. So, so it's consistency in the process. Yeah, that's great to hear because that's why it's good if you plan it out because then you can kind of um, have, everyth have everything in line. I love that. It's in the monthly <laughs> plan. There's a special every month. Um. All right, so when they're designing the plan, uh, you want to meet as a team and determine your offer, like we said, for the next 12 months or three months or four months, whatever it may, it may be. And you want to get uh, your team involved. So you had mentioned uh, you have your marketing expert, the decision makers, and then the general manager or lead advisor. Why include the advisor and um, general manager? Why, why collaborate with everyone? Well, in our situation we have put egos aside and we ask for feedback from all the important leaders in the in the company and we include the technicians the tech teams have a have a main uh, lead tech and we want to hear what they know we we cannot lead by making a uh, a demand we lead by say, hey, I got an idea. What do you think? And then we get feedback from everybody. We compile it and we take the best of what we hear. And then we we let everyone know uh, in advance of putting something out that this is the plan. This is what we came up with from with everybody's input and we're going to execute. The ideal yeah. situation is full bays every day and uh, happy, satisfied team members, happy, satisfied guests. Right, with meaningful work, right? With meaningful work and fair pay. Yeah. Um, so when determining the offer, you want to decide who you want to target, right? Who is eligible? Are there any exclusions? How will the discount be processed? How will you monitor the success? Who will you inform and train or who will inform and train the sta staff of the monthly discount? And then... Um, who will put it and pick her rewards and when? Um, so, had at your shop, who informs the service advisors what the promotion is and what it's going to be and how it works? So, the mechanical shop manager, the dispatcher, is is in charge of communication to the staff, the working staff. So, he's involved in the creation of the uh, of the plan. And he's very, very engaged. Uh, he dispatches and um, he holds the team accountable for their for their uh, productivity. And so he feeds the he feeds the right work to the right people. And so he knows he knows um, what the marketing plan is and shares it with everybody uh, throughout the house. Awesome. So you had kind of touched on this a little bit about um, 
the types of marketing. So there's the proactive marketing and that's what you plan out, right? You plan it out for the year. Um, and then you had mentioned you like to send the text for around the first of the month, as close to the first of the month as possible. And then um, tell me why you send the text first and then follow up with an email about a week later. Well, the customers are getting used to uh, getting a text blast for what's special that month. And then we wait a week because most companies do send an email out first of the month. So we wait a week and we use the same theme. If we're going to send a text about, we'll, we'll continue to beat up that uh, the, the free alignment check, road test and alignment check. But a week later, we send an email out promoting the same thing because they saw it once. And now a week later, they saw it again. And if they're on our social media channel, they're going to see it a couple more times throughout the month. And amazing to me, because I was not a marketing genius, I had the right people in place and the customers flood in. We keep track of how many come in for the specials on our on our marketing tracker. And it, it is it, it is getting busier every month with the stuff we're promoting. So. The customers are getting used to it, and it's a it, the system is built. You start out with a plan, and then you build it, and then track it, and then you know what works. If you got a flop one month, and you might change it the next year to something different that month, but the things that work, keep them and repeat it. Yep, and then uh, obviously post on social media. What what about the posters in the lobby? How does tell us a little so, bit about that? So that was interesting to me too, was that for consistency, the people who didn't pay attention to the text or the email would come in for maintenance and on the front door and at the front counters on the walls is promoting whatever that month's special is. The nice thing is they're a little expensive to, pr to print, but you can use them every year. So it just Keep continues it. to perpetuate uh, the theme that we are organized. We know what we're doing. And this month, we know you would like to have your lighting inspected. And most of the time, we'll even put in the, 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 the easy light bulbs for mm -hmm. them at no cost. And that is part of the marketing plan to give that away and send them on their way. Perfect. And then always tie it back to rewards. So one of the things that um, we noticed on your monthly blast is that you always offer some type of bonus incentive. So we can even see here that on this offer, they get a free road test and alignment check and a $20 loyalty reward bonus. Um, tell us how that's benefited the shop. So I was really skeptical about that in the beginning, thinking that we're just, in, we're just giving away the farm. But here's what I found out. People read the ad and they say, okay, I get a free road test and alignment check. I know they're going to try and sell me something if I need it. But look, I get 20 bucks for just coming in and taking advantage of the free offer. And the 20 bucks goes towards future visits. They can't spend it on that visit. That's part of the uh, rules that you make. So they can use it for the future because what you want is for them to get a text ping throughout the month that says, hey, you get money mm -hmm. down at Gustafson's and um, come on down and spend it. Expires uh, in a year, right? If you don't use any. Right. Yep. And that's customizable too. So uh, I know your shop's at a year. Some shops go 18 months, um, whatever, whatever you desire, we can, we can set it at whatever you'd like. Um, so that's proactive marketing. And then the other type of marketing um, that you use is reactive marketing. Um, so in this situation, you said send it while the situation is hot, keep it simple, offer help. So, so tell us about how reactive marketing or reactive um, blasts have helped you? So when it rains, people are not moving around as much except to go to work and back and they want to stay out of the rain. Mm. But in the rain, they need wiper blades. So when we get an unusually long storm or like we're having uh, this year, we'll send out a text blast that says uh, free wiper blades with service, with regular service over 50 bucks right? Almost everything's over 50 bucks anyway. And the wiper blades, if you buy right, get your suppliers involved and um, buy right, you can get away with four or five bucks a blade 
So you're going to give away 10 bucks for a pair of blades. You don't include the back one. And you may not include some Highline cars, but for very little, you can get a text blast out there and keep your bays full. And we know that to be the key. Keep the bays full of, of, of work that the guys enjoy doing and they're good at. And the profits just keep rolling in. Beautiful. <clears throat> All right. So, and then part of the plan too is let everyone on the team know about the offer before it's out, including, uh -huh. uh, and you had kind of mentioned this, by the way, that's me right there. Um, advisors, technicians, support staff, and accounting. Why accounting? Why would you want them to know about the promo? Really, everybody in the house needs to know that this is the monthly promo, and you can expect mm -hmm. we put out what's called an S. Uh, a jib that says this is what's going to happen this month and here's how you handle each phase so if everybody knows then we're all rowing in the same direction and the customer doesn't get a uh, somebody saying well why well, I, I never heard that <laughs> you, you have to be consistent in your approach and that 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 comes from the eos process too Perfect. consistency and communication the cascading messages All right, so in the chat, we're going to put a link on how to set up a blast. Um, but if you want to set up a blast text and email, either or, or both, just like John has, um, we've designed a link for you to use. And all you're going to do is you'll click on it. And hopefully you can still see my screen here. See my screen? Thumbs up. Um, so when you get this, you're just going to put the, your shop name so we know who you're working with, uh, your name, so we know if we have any questions, who to go back to. And then just some really simple information. All we need to know is when you want the blast to go. So if you're, you know, working on your blast for February and you want it to go on February 1st, put that date in there. And then you'll put the blast type. Um, so here's where you tell us if you want uh, text, which we refer to as SMS. Um, if you want just email, just text, or both, you would just determine what kind you want. And then you tell us who do you want to send it to. Um, so this is your list criteria. Um, kind of going back to what John said, you want to market it right to the certain type of customer. So you can tell us if you want to uh, send it to your customers who have been in the past year, the past two years. Um, you can go back as far as you'd like. And you can also tell us other demographics as well. So maybe you want to send 10% off to customers who had previous recommendations. Just type out what you want. And then what we do is we pull that information from your database um, so we can send just to those specific customers. Um, you could also tell us, send it to everyone. We'll send it to everyone in there. Um, <clears throat> you can determine if you want to send it to just customers with rewards dollars. Or maybe you want to target customers that don't have any rewards dollars to have them come in both. Or if you're undecided, <clears throat> just let us know and we can help uh, walk you through that. If you have a multi-store location, so meaning more than one location, you can tell us you want it to do all stores or maybe just select stores. <clears throat> so a lot of times, uh, maybe there's a chain of shops and just one area seems to be slow for the month and you want to do a blast targeting that area, we can do that for you as well. <clears throat> then you would put the message or the reason for the blast. So uh, if there's a, a specific message you wanted to get out to your customers, <clears throat> we've actually used this when uh, phones have gone down. Um, I know that happens, right? The phones are down. You need to tell your customers, hey, there's another way you can get a, a, in touch with us. You can type that out there, whatever message you have. And then you would explain the offer. Um, so in John's example, he's doing a free alignment check, right? So you would just explain um, what, what you're offering to the customer and let us know if there are any um, <clears throat> exclusions, maybe anything you uh, want to exclude. So not on four-wheel drive vehicles or whatever. Um, you can opt to add rewards. So say we want to text customers that don't have a reward balance and you want your message to say, hey, we noticed you didn't have anything in your account. So we're going to give you a $10 bonus or a $20 bonus. You can tell us what amount to add there. 
<clears throat> um, we have that. And then uh, for the graphics. So we saw in uh, John's example some of the, the graphics. If you have something you want to provide, you can include it um, here with us or we can design it for you. We have uh, Brenda, I think, on the call here who's in our design department and she does an amazing job. So if you <clears throat> share the specifics of the, um, the offer, she can design something beautiful using your logo, your fonts, your brands, your colors. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then any other notes that you want us to uh, know, you can add, attach your files and then just click submit. And then it goes right to our, to our team. And that's how you uh, start the blast. <clears throat> and we can usually get these out pretty quick. Um, Phil, I don't know if you want to jump in. If you don't have a graphic design, we can do it in, in a couple hours. If you have a graphic design, we do need a day or so to, to get that going. Yeah, I'll talk <clears throat> for just a minute, just let you get your voice back there for a second. <laughs> I know Cynthia's been sick. So um, great information here. I, I, I agree with it. Everything that's been been said on the point, mainly marketing is just consistency, right? So, uh, at the shop I used to work at, we used to uh, schedule, and this was back pre uh, SMS blast that we now have the capability to do. So, I love the idea of of, of spreading it out weekly or, or monthly, however you do it. So, that consistency, both for your team and for your customers, knowing that on the first they're going to be receiving. Uh, let's just say a, a, an SMS blast, right? And one thing you, Cynthia just showed there is you can get very detailed on on the lists you want to go after, right? So you might want to appeal to those customers who have spent, let's say, above $150 in the past um, year or so, right? You can get very specific and very customized to who you want to go to. And and one of the things we focus here on, on Pick Crew, when you when you talk marketing, you often think about acquiring new customers, what this program allows you to do is really look after your your regular customer, uh, look after your current customer base, and, and reward those guys with with offers, and, and and in turn you get to see them more regularly, right? So you have this great customer base that you have you have built uh, through through years of, of great service and and and, and good uh, manners at the front desk and 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 good marketing in general. You've gained this customer base now. You want to look after them. It's much cheaper uh, and much easier to look after that current customer base than throwing money at. And we're not saying direct mail doesn't work because at times it does. It just can be expensive if it's a consistent thing. So if you're get, paying money to get these guys through the door, at the very least we want to do is, is do our best to keep them. And, and that's what John keeps talking about with the rewards card program. Um, set up some kind of consistency so those offers are going to your current customer base uh, and they're feeling like they've got well taken care of. Because of all this, of all the marketing plans we can talk about, the best marketing comes from your reputation uh, and people referring you and, and talking to their friends about you. So um, great, great job, guys. This is this is awesome. So looking forward to seeing the, the recording of it. And then um, a somewhat new feature that we have that's now live is our deals um, feature. And you may have seen a little icon like this if you're logging in every day on the uh, messaging hub. So with the deal, you can use that. Um, like say, for example, you go to a networking event, you go to a chamber of commerce meeting <clears throat> and you tell everyone, hey, text this number and we'll send you a special deal. So text this number with the word chamber and we'll send you a special offer. Um, you can use it to attract technicians or to get people to apply. So when you're posting ads, you can just say text apply to a phone number, <clears throat> your pit crew reward uh, text number, and then we'll send them a link to apply. And you can use it to coordinate special offers to your website. So maybe you always have some running deals on your website. You can just put on the website, hey, text the word deals to this number and then we'll send you the the offers of the month if you will um so i'm going to demonstrate how to set that up it's something that you don't need pit crew for you can do it right now um in the shop so <clears throat> i just want to make sure you guys can all see my screen and the familiar looking messaging hub good all right so what you're going to do is you'll click on this deals icon here and when you click on that, you're going to see if you have any pending deals. Um, so by pending, maybe you schedule it, but it doesn't start quite yet. 
you'll see any live deals that you currently have going and any expired deals. Um, so to add a new one, all you're gonna do is click the plus button <clears throat> and then you'll put the deal description. So what do you wanna call it? So I'm gonna call this one a uh, chamber of commerce, right? Um, John had mentioned he's a member of his local chamber of commerce. So when you go to meetings, maybe you want they always ask for the deal, right? Or if you're part of a networking group, the BNI group, they always want to know what's what's the deal. I'm going to um, increase my screen size here. Hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit. So what you want the deal to be called. And then the category, you could put none, but maybe it's batteries or maybe it's oil changes, whatever it may be. Um, you just click the category that you like. In this case, case I'm going to click oil change. Then you determine when do you want this deal to start? So when do I want people to be able to take advantage of this? Um, we're gonna start Monday, January 16th. And then when does it end? Meaning when do we wanna, um, when we say the end date, when do we want them to not be able to text this word and still get the special offer? So I'm gonna have it go for a month, let's say. <clears throat> And then the expires would be when the actual deal expires. Um, so say we're gonna offer $20 off oil change, they can claim the deal between January 16th, February 28th, but we'll give them till March, um, we'll give them till April 30th to use it. Then you determine your deal trigger word. So we could put, um, we'll put HB Chamber, right? Cause uh, John's in Huntington Beach. And then the deal text. So, you know, thank you for being whatever you want it to say, whatever your special offer is, we'll put here is $20 off your first oil change, right? And then you, you want to tell them what to do, what's the behavior. So show us this text to rename. And then all you do is hit submit. And oops, now it shows as pending because I had the uh, start date as January 16th. Um, I can edit it. <clears throat> so if I wanted to make it live today, I can just put in today's date and click submit. <clears throat> and then you'll see now that it's live. So if anyone wanted to uh, test it out, let me get you John's. Uh, text number here. <clears throat> so if you want to test it out, if you text the word HB chamber to 714-465-5681, you'll get uh, that text that we just set up right there. So I think that's uh, pretty cool and it's a great way to um, you know, start interacting with your customers. And then you could also use it, like I think it's great to use it for, uh, to attract technicians, right? You can just say, text the word apply to um, that phone number. And you guys can try that out too, because it looks like we have that set up for John. So, You know, hmm. we haven't used that yet because it's new, but I can see sending that out on social media, text mm -hmm. this to this number yep. and get this reward back. I think yeah. that I think that's fabulous. Yeah, or you know, the, your advisors, right? We have some advisors on the call. You're out, and people find out, hey, you work at a shop. You know, what kind of deal? You can just say, hey, text the word save to this number right here, and I'll I'll text you the deal. So it, it's fantastic for for networking when you're out there. And again, like John said, uh, tying it back to your social media, you can Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. Um, so a couple uh, takeaways before we go to our Q&A. Um, remember, for all marketing, you want to keep it simple. You want to plan ahead, right? You don't want to um, be reactive with your marketing. You want to be proactive. John always suggests text first, then follow up with the email. Keep your staff informed because there's nothing worse um, as an advisor for a customer to come up and say, oh, hey, I got this offer, and they know nothing about it, right? Make it fun, keep it fun, and keep it consistent. So now, if you'd like to um, unmute yourself or you can type in the chat if you have any questions for John 
myself or Phil, we are here for you. Remember, if you have a question to unmute or anything to add. All right. Any last uh, words of advice, John? Uh, business coach, business coaches help businesses grow. We didn't know we needed one until very late in the game. And I consider pit crew one of my coaches. So we rely on vendors like pit crew to solve our problems in the easiest way. I want the, I want business to run as simple and as easy as possible. And, um, in addition to other advisors in our world, uh, pit crew is certainly a valuable one and we appreciate you. Well, thank you. Um, and we do have one question for you. Uh, so how do you choose content for your newsletter? So we write about current and relative things. Um, it, 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 you'd have to see one of our newsletters to know, but we, <clears throat> we, it's seasonal, you know, every month is a new season in our world and we, we, we talk about what's going on in the world, in our world, if we're having an anniversary or if we have um, uh, things going on in our work family, we'll put that out there. And we always yeah. keep the offers in the newsletters consistent with what's going on for that month. Yeah, and when, when I wrote uh, newsletters, I would, you know, you're, you're interacting with customers all day long and I would hear a question you know, they'd ask me something like, well, how do I know when I need to change my air filter? Well, boom, that was what I would write about in the newsletter, right? Just those questions that people don't know if they don't, they don't work at a shop. And then you can tie kind of tie that too to the offer um, that you're offering for that month. So if you were doing alignment, maybe you could write an article about how to tell if your car is out of alignment or, you know, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. And a story on cabin filters and mm -hmm. have an offer for free cabin filter when your service exceeds whatever your price point is. Mm -hmm. People and then like you can getting all, free stuff. They do. And then also highlight, uh, you know, what you do in the community. So if you volunteer, you can write about, you know, how you volunteered or how the shop gave back um, that month. And that also ties into uh, Pit Crew. One of our uniquenesses is that customers have the ability to donate their loyalty rewards to nonprofits or charities. And I was excited to learn that John's going to um, do his first uh, donation to your um, Gustafson Education Foundation, right? To the youth automotive training. So right. that's exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, what other questions do we have? Remember, you can unmute yourself and ask, or I just want to make sure we're not missing any chats. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think we're, we are good. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Phil or myself. Oops, wait, I hear, I see three dots. Somebody's typing something. <clears throat> Type fast, Trish. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, so Trish just gave some feedback, feedback that she loves the deal button. I love it too. I just think there are so many possibilities with that. And uh, if you want any more training on that, just reach out to us and um, we can walk you through it. So we're here for you. All right. And with that, I just wish you all a great day. And then we will send you a uh, recording of this uh, meeting. So happy selling. Goodbye. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, Cynthia. Bye. Thanks, John. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye.